okay, we want to be mindful of your time and, and our, our uh, partner's time. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us on this actually beautiful Monday afternoon. It's 84 degrees in Fresno and that's really nice and cool. For those of you who missed our first topic, which was Work-Life Balance 2.0, this is a project that Becky Zhang and I worked on over the summer in conjunction with New Leave Training and Development to put together a series designed specifically for classified professionals to help you grow and develop new skills and find some balance in your roles here at Fresno City College and anywhere else you may go. This is part one of two of the time management series. New Leaf Training and Development is based in Valencia with an office in Florida, and they deliver seminars, keynotes, coaching, and online workshops like these to help people and organizations better manage, manage themselves. Our facilitator today, Erin Miller, is a client partner with New Leaf. Erin has extensive experience working in and leading teams to achieve the vision and mission of their organizations while operating on a noble set of values. He serves as a professor, professor of leadership and administration at a leading university in the Los Angeles area. Erin holds a bachelor of arts and a master's degree, and he serves in a variety of volunteer roles to be of service to others. Erin, take it away. Thank you so much, Susie, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm glad to be with you. Like she said, my name is Aaron Miller. I'm the client partner with New Leaf Training and Development, and uh, we're going to be leading through a, a journey on the subject matter of time management. Now, New Leaf, as you've heard, is based here in Valencia. We have an East Coast office in Orlando, but we've been able to see our uh, professional instruction move beyond the, the border of the United States into Western Europe, India, Asia, and Australia. And uh, three things that we believe here at New Leaf, everyone would need in order to be successful in the world of work. The first would be how to manage yourselves. Now that's a good thing because we're gonna talk about that today and on Friday. Secondly, it would be to how to influence others, right? Which is really the brass ring of leadership development, right? How can we lead and influence others in a direction that is profitable, not only for ourselves, but for the organization that we're with. And then thirdly, we won't discuss this today or on Friday, but thirdly, uh, we believe that in order to be successful in the workplace, that you would need to have an acute understanding of the business financials of the organization that you are working for. Again, we're not going to cover any of that, but uh, that'd be kind of the three-pillared approach to being successful in the place of work. Now, three promises I want to make you today, okay? Number one, you won't be bored. In fact, that's a rule. You're not allowed to be bored. Okay, we're going to talk about time management in such a way that hopefully uh, it's engaging and what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it. So that leads to the second promise. What we're going to deal with today will be highly participative. So we're going to ask for responses. We're going to put you out into break rooms and, and have you kind of go over material together. And then thirdly, that material, the third promise will be very practical and helpful for your use. And so what you're going to see me do as your facilitator, I'm going to put out there a proven concept or a principle. We're then going to engage that concept or principle with an activity. And then the final stage, ask the big question, so what? How can this apply today or tomorrow? How can we begin to realize this in our personal lives and in our professional lives? And one of the things I love about New Leaf Training and Development, okay, and I'm a firm believer of this, is the philosophy of the professional instruction really is principle versus technique. Now, what's the difference between principle and technique? Well, techniques are more temporal, right? Techniques could be somewhat debatable given the context, but principles really do stem from ground root, absolute universal um, foundations, right? So they are true whether they want to, we want to acknowledge them, or not. So like the golden rule, you treat others the way that you want to be treated, or the law of the harvest, we reap what we sow, right? So these are rules that we generally live by. And in the area of time management, we find that this is also true. Now, I say all of that to mention, everything that you're going to hear today and next and uh, this coming Friday are not going to be things that you've never really thought about before. In fact, I think you'll realize I've known this all along. The wisdom is already in the room. And what we're going to do through this facilitation is we're going to unlock the things that you already do know. These are principles. And so you see here the 
the diagram or the model that is often called the see, do, get model. Um, what this is depicting here is that when it comes to time management, our perceptions lead into behaviors that in the final analysis bring about results. So, so if our perception, how we view ourselves, how we view our world of work, how we view our organization or our customers or whatever have you, that's going to directly influence a set of behaviors that ultimately, and those behaviors, again, are things that we do or we say or things that we don't do or we don't say. Ultimately, in the final analysis, that's going to bring about results that are favorable or unfavorable. And so the question is then, what holds all of this together in the center? Well, you're going to see there the center is going to be those principles that New Leaf builds its curriculum and its professional instructions off of. Now, when it comes to time management, I just want to throw this out there. What are some principles uh, when it comes to time management that we really do know? You can unlock the um, kind of the chat room or you can unmute yourself and speak to the issue. What are some principles that we all kind of feel we, we really do know when it comes to time management? Go ahead. Since principles are true for no matter where you are, they're universal, right? You really can't argue them. They're things that, again, like the golden rule, like the, the, the rule of the harvest, things that you really can't not know, right? There are principles that are true and objective. Maybe some examples would be that we can't manage time, right? We, we can only manage ourselves or what we can't manage as we can't manage times, it marches on with or without us, right? These are principles that we really do know so that when it comes to managing our time, we really need to know what we can control. And so what can we control? Well, according to this diagram, what we can control is our perception. What we can control is our behavior, right? Now, where do we get our perceptions from? Now, many would say we get our perceptions from experiences that we've had, the way that we've been raised, and, and that's absolutely true. But our, our, um, our upbringing, or is the way that we've experienced certain things, do they guarantee effective perceptions? Well, I think if we're honest, the answer to that is, is not always. It's not an airtight uh, absolute. Our perceptions could very easily lead us one way or another, and sometimes it could be uh, in error. Uh, but so what are some effective behaviors when it comes to time management? If, if we can't always uh, rely upon effective perceptions and we can't always um, rely upon how that's going to affect the behaviors that will follow, what are some effective behaviors when it comes to time management? I want to encourage you to think through um, how that applies to your, your, uh, your world of work. Right? Examples offered by uh, some of you could be good working relations can improve time management or perhaps planning the week before the week begins. That would be a good effective behavior to sow into your work week. Perhaps uh, daily planning before the day begins. There are things that we really do know. These are principles that we live by that will affect perceptions and behaviors. So if we do know these things, the question is, why don't we always get superb results when it comes to time management? So during today's seminar and the seminar there on Friday, we're going to work together to discuss and apply these proven principles and these strategies to remind ourselves of specific perceptions and specific behaviors that significantly and sustainably improve our ability to manage our time. As experienced professionals, which I know you are, you may not hear anything new. OK, these aren't going to be uh, things that you've not considered before. Again, the wisdom is in the room. We're simply going to unlock that wisdom and then apply it so that we begin to walk in what we do know. Now, again, all of this is built on principles. So the big principle, as we're laying our foundation before we launch into the seminar, the big principle when it comes to time management is this. We cannot manage time. At best, we can manage our priorities. We can manage effective relationships and efficient processes. These things can help, but ultimately, we can't control what we know we can't control. But we can control our perceptions and we can control our behaviors. And so I want to draw your attention to that participation workbook where you see that see, do, get model as we talk about the principles and how they're tied to our perceptions, our behaviors, and the results that we 
that we experience. In that, in that workbook, you'll be able to see how we're gonna walk you through points of application and the material that you're gonna gather around together. And so what I wanna do is kind of chart out our course and look ahead as to where we're going. And on that first page in your workbook, you're gonna see our objectives as we walk through. I wanna give you a few seconds here to take a glance at those objectives and then ask the question, so what? What will this actually mean for us? How could we apply these principles that we really do know? How could we begin to apply them in our daily lives? Now, as we set out on this journey together, uh, I just wanna mention a few things that might make our time worthwhile. So just some learning agreements, uh, learning rules. Let's try to be fully engaged while we're, while we're here and when we break up into our, our, our groups, um, let's really devote ourselves to the exercises and hopefully the end result, right? As we engage this together, the end result will be some real tangible evidences of, of knowing how to manage the things that we can control, knowing that we can actually manage time. All right. All right. So we're going to begin. Hope you're ready. Here we go. We're going to start with an exercise of self-assessment. As part of our commitment to always help participants receive significant and sustainable benefits from each of our seminars, uh, I, I want you to invest a few minutes to complete a self-assessment on the subject time of management. It's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but you would kind of just answer these. Don't think too deeply about them. I, I don't want you to, to rack your brain too badly on, on getting everything right. Just whatever occurs to you and whatever is obvious, I'm going to give you about five minutes to do so. Ready, set, go.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back center. I'm gonna go ahead and invite you into breakout rooms with one other person to share your findings. I find that it's always helpful to whatever we apply ourselves to individually to then circle around and articulate that with another individual or a group of people. So we're gonna give you four minutes in total, two minutes each. You might wanna go ahead and set the timer on your, on your watch. Uh, keep in mind, it'd be helpful if you uh, have your camera on uh, so it doesn't look like you're talking to somebody. It'd be like having a, a black trash bag over your head, quite honestly, if you're trying to communicate. And we want this to be profitable and enjoyable for everyone. Uh, at the end of that time, I'll go ahead and give you 30 seconds uh, for a heads up, and that will close out our break room. So four minutes, two minutes each, ready, set, and go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and welcome everyone back. Hopefully that was a profitable time. You, of course, can use this worksheet uh, again by making just a different color pen on its application, or if you'd like electronic par uh, copy uh, here at New Leaf, we could send that to you. It's helpful just to kind of reassess kind of where we are. Another interesting uh, tool to, uh, to apply would be to ask someone who's close to you. It could be a supervisor. It could be a spouse, a close friend, to maybe give you their thoughts on how you do in terms of managing yourself in the area of time management. But moving right along, um, we, we really only identify two types of time management challenges, people and process. Now, you might be thinking that there is no way uh, that is that black. Got you. I just got a word from Paul. I don't see the timer. Okay, welcome back everybody. Hopefully that was profitable. Uh, again, if you ever wanna take that exercise again, I would recommend maybe using a different color pen next time, or if you'd like an electronic copy, that's something that New Leaf can send to you uh, by email or some other electronic copy. Uh, it's sometimes helpful to ask people that are close to you, whether it be a supervisor or a spouse or a close friend to maybe give you their assessments on how you handle uh, the area of time management as you manage yourself. Um, so we're, as we're moving quite uh, moving along, I'm wondering if anything surfaced in terms of like what you've already identified, what you've been able to uh, apply so far um, and take that point of application, think on it, uh, discuss it again with someone who's close to you that knows you well enough to know if uh, this is an area of strength or an area that you need to work on. But moving right along, um, we at New Leaf have identified that there really are only two types of time management challenges, people and process. Now, you might be thinking uh, there's no way that that's that black and white, but we are confident through our experience uh, that you'll find that it is. So let's go ahead and kick the tires on this principle, because remember, we're, we're working off of principles, all right? Um, I'm going to throw out there, or I want you to think through rather on your own, what are some common time management challenges that you could categorize as being primarily people or primarily process based? You could either unmute yourself and speak to the matter, uh, or you can go ahead and add to the chat box. How would you, how would you, um, say people? You could just say the capital P. If you wanted to communicate process, you could communicate. PR in the chat box, but when you think about significant time management challenges, how would you classify them? Let's first start by identifying some of those challenges. Does anybody want to have a go? Yes. People who don't want to work as much as you're trying to get your own work done. Very good. So how would you classify then that as a challenge? Would oh, that be people. process? Would that be definitely would be people. people? Very good. Yes. Anyone else want to contribute? Very good. And it's really important that you think generally here. I mean, we could get into the weeds and, and sometimes if we get too far into those weeds, we can see how it's either a people and a process. And we're just generally thinking in these categories. But I want to welcome your attention back to the participants workbook. And I'd like you to think about your own time management issues and force yourself to categorize those issues as being either people-based or a process-based challenge. At the top of the page, you'll see there that there is an example to help you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
give you a few minutes to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to ask you uh, to discuss your findings after. I'm going to give you about three minutes. So ready, set, and go. All right. Well, welcome back. I'm going to go ahead and invite you into uh, another chat room, give you four minutes per team, two minutes each. We're going to ask you to discuss your findings. I encourage you to maybe, again, put that, uh, that timer on and uh, be aware of the time and uh, make it profitable. Ready, set, go. All right. Now, the goal with people is to always build and sustain trust which is easy to say, but it really can be hard to do. If we were to double click on that word, trust, we find that it contains character and competence. We tend to trust people who have high character, right? People, they are integrity uh, filled people, who they are. And we tend to trust people that have high competence in what they do and what they're able to wrap their mind around and have a vision for. Now you might want to, fill in that blank there at the bottom of your worksheet when it says the goal of people is to build and sustain trust, right? And, and you'll see that we're going to get to the process here in a minute, but would you trust someone who was of high character but incompetent? I highly doubt that we would fully. Would you trust someone who was highly competent but maybe had some grave concerns about their character? Again, I, I highly doubt that we, we would. Um, are there any examples out there, I'm sure that you could think of, where people who have high competency, but because of their character, you just weren't able to work alongside of them, or vice versa. You, you're right now probably thinking of situations or names, perhaps, and I don't want to veer off into any sort of negativity. My point is, we've all had those experiences where we've been in situations where we wish we could change the outcomes. But again, going back to that principle, what can we really truly change. We can't change and manage time, but we can change and manage our perceptions and our behaviors. Let me ask you this question. Can you change other people? I mean, if you're working with someone who lacks competence and or character, can you change them? Well, in a very true sense, you can't. You might be able to temporarily alter a direction. You might be able to influence for the uh, short time or foreseeable future, certain situations, but in the heart of the matter, you really can't change someone who lacks confidence and or character. So the goal of process, if the goal with people is always to build and sustain trust, the goal with process is always to reduce time. Of course, we need to ensure that the quality uh, is relevant and safety are to be a required standard and all of that. But but no one ever starts a process and a system and a procedure thinking, let's take as long as humanly possible to do this, correct? So, so the goal of process is always to reduce time. So the question, the application question, what can you do? What can you apply? Knowing that the goal with people is to build trust and that the goal of processes is, is to reduce time, I'd like you to now partner with someone. We're gonna put you back in those chat rooms and work through some of your challenges. You're gonna have three minutes per person. Now you're gonna engage in another person's time management challenge. The job here to be done is to brainstorm with your partner the wisdom that is already in the room to bring about uh, the best possible situation. Highly effective people focus on what they can do rather than what they can't change or influence. Again, I just wanna set the parameters here. It's not a time to badmouth other people or dwell too deeply on negativity, um, but we wanna brainstorm solutions here. So again, you're gonna have three minutes per person. And then after that, we will bring it back center. Ready, set, and go. All right, well, welcome back. Moving right along with our fourth module here. I'm wondering how many of you practice weekly planning? Right? How, how many of you take the time, whether it be on a Friday, whether it be on a Saturday, Sunday, or actually any day, depending on your work week, you take the time to actually go through um, the entire scope of the week. For those of you, those of you that do this, right? Uh, what would you say are some of the benefits in doing this as you have experienced it? You can go ahead and unmute it. But again, let's share some of the wisdom that's in the room. For those of you who practice weekly planning, 
what are some of the benefits of doing so? Uh, being able to tell people that you cannot attend a meeting because you have uh, something that's higher priority to take care of. Very good. It certainly helps prioritize things that uh, would give you the week uh, in its scope. Less stress is what I'm also seeing there, which is uh, very, very true indeed. Uh, here at New Leaf, um, we believe that there are, are so many benefits uh, and responses that we tend to hear when we do this seminar is number one, that weekly planning helps me see the big picture for the week ahead, which I think is what we've already alluded to. Um, We've also heard that people do it before the week starts, which seems to be a self-explanatory practice, but uh, people tend to procrastinate. Uh, we cast the vision through a whole life lens is another thing that we've identified. And then we build in some breathing say, space, say about 20% breathing space. And it's been our experience that this is a beautiful thing because when you think about seven days within a week, it's close enough to be highly relevant uh, but distant enough to give you perspective of the, the scope of that week, because you're going to have different goals and, and different things shift in your life. Now, I'm just curious how many of you also, um, as you're doing the uh, weekly training or the weekly planning, um, um, what are some of those um, uh, benefits before the week begins? When you think about uh, the timing, is it a Sunday night? Is it a Saturday? Is it a Friday? Is it an early Monday morning? Um, when you schedule your, your high priorities and you cast it through a whole life lens. Now, why, why mention the whole life lens? Sometimes there's some questions or ambiguity about what that means. Well, what we have learned is that all of you is where you are. And, and so you have your personal life and you have your professional life. Um, but invariably, these points can have touches of conflict. And so me and my personal life, I'd like to think that I'm a hard compartmentalizer, but I'm not. Uh, when I'm having perhaps a hard day at work, I could very easily bring that home. And maybe when things aren't as peachy at home, I invariably can find that that could affect my work day. So when we're planning out the week, we need to think the, the whole perspective of the whole person. And we build in breathing space into our, into our week. 20% is what we, what we suggest. Why? Well, because things happen, unexpected things happen. And so as we're planning out our week, thinking ahead seven days, again, it's not too far into the, the future that it's irrelevant, but it's just enough breathing space for us to move things around. Moving on, uh, we find that it's effective to daily prioritize. Those of you that maybe daily prioritize, um, here are some of the practices that we recommend. Plan the day before the day begins. It seems self-explanatory, but sometimes we, we need to be reminded of this. Uh, schedule your highest priorities. Use some sort of ranking system that makes sense to you. Per protect your personal commitments and protect your breathing space. Again, again, say like 20%. Now, what are some similarities and differences compared to the weekly planning? Right? What are some ranking systems you use for scheduling your highest priorities? There's wisdom in the room. Does somebody mind unmuting themselves and sharing some of their practices when it comes to prioritizing their day? I'll share, Aaron, um, a deadline, right? So if payroll's due, important, not, not just a deadline, an important deadline, uh, payroll, uh, something like that. Or when we have a process here, we call it magic. So in order for people to get paid, a magic has to be processed. Those magic deadlines tied to payroll. Very good. Certainly people appreciate that as being a priority and getting certain pieces of information in on time. Uh, so again, we've color, covered weekly uh, planning. We've co covered daily uh, prioritization. The third tier of time management that we would really want to um, kind of awaken your mind to would be the area of managing your energy. Um, when you hear the reference of managing energy, what comes to your mind? Uh, perhaps you, you think about your sleep cycle. Perhaps you think about your diet. And indeed, these are some things that we have found have impacted things like time management. Make sure that you get enough sleep. Be aware of what you're eating and what you're drinking. Consider, are you a morning person or are you an afternoon person? Are you an evening person? Do you get energy from people or solitude? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? 
I would take you, I would encourage you to go ahead in your workbook, you'll see the, uh, the, the workspace there to fill in uh, the blanks there and to consider for yourself where this is true for you. What do you think is the recommended amount of sleep for a working adult? Now, some of you perhaps need more than others or less than others, uh, but according to the National Sleep Foundation, seven to nine hours is pretty typical. What kind of things do you do before you sleep that help you enjoy a restful night's sleep? These are things that you need to consider. How do you wind down your day? How do you start your day on the flip side? What, what energizes you? What kind of foods and, and drinks and routines free up the mental space and the physical uh, space in order for you to work effectively? How does knowing whether you're a morning person or an afternoon person? I, I happen to be a morning person. My wife is not a morning person. And so if there's something urgent that we need to discuss, the time frame of when we're going to meet as a couple, it matters. Well, the trues, same is true for the world of work. Uh, are you best served uh, holding certain types of meetings there in the morning, or are you best served in moving those to the afternoon? So how does knowing if you get your energy from people or whether you get your energy from solitude impact the way in which you prioritize your day or plan your week? Any thoughts on managing your energy? I'd like to know what wisdom is in the room on on this. Any thoughts? Coffee, of course, I see lots of coffee. Be careful was, with that caffeine intake. Go ahead. Um, I was gonna share, um, like you, Erin, I'm usually a morning person. So any projects or um, activities I have that's gonna be like very cognitively demanding, I usually schedule it before lunch hour. Um, so, you know, in in the part where you're planning your week, I'm usually like blocking off an hour to two hours of time to like read over a contract or read over whatever it is that's going to be demanding of my brain. <laughs> yes, yes. How you think and how you process requires uh, internal mental energy. And that sometimes I think that's an, that's an area that is wildly overlooked, especially in a culture that tends to pride itself on burning the candle at both ends. If you want to manage your time, you're definitely not going to su succeed in doing that if you're uh, if you're not managing yourself well to that end. So, so being aware of the week in its scope, your daily priorities, and also how you uh, best manage your own energy is going to deeply affect. Again, these are things, folks. These are things that you can you can change. These are things that you can control. Can't control time, but you can use these principles uh, to to better manage yourselves. And so what we want to do is we want to take the time uh, to actually uh, maybe put this to practice what we've discussed so far. So you'll notice there in your workbook, uh, there is a seven day calendar. And of course, we tend to use electronic calendars uh, these days, but sometimes it's, it's helpful to maybe tangibly write things down. It kind of gets us into a system of thought that's helpful. But I'm going to ask you to go ahead and invest the next eight minutes on your own. This is an individual exercise, uh, so no need for conversation uh, with anyone else. But go ahead and invest the next eight minutes on um, your own uh, weekly calendar. Start the, the scope and, and think through what each day will entail. If next week is more of a normal week than this week, perhaps this week is too crazy, then, then start on next week is what I would recommend. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give you eight minutes on the clock. Go ahead, ready, set, and go.
Okay, I'm gonna give you two more minutes to wrap things up. So two more minutes as you're giving yourself over to this exercise. Hopefully you're seeing things surface according to weekly planning, daily prioritization, and managing your energy. Again, about two minutes left. Okay, welcome back center. Um, now I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and invest uh, another six minutes with your partner, three minutes each to discuss your findings. I would encourage you like before to place maybe three minutes in your head in terms of just uh, whereabouts time, but we of course will welcome you back to the main, main room when it's all said and done. So on you go, six minutes, three minutes a piece. Ready, set, go. Okay, welcome back. See people are coming back in. Uh, now this will kind of only be part one of our weekly planning, daily prioritization and managing the energy section. When we come back Friday, we'll hit the back end of that and uh, we'll actually be looking uh, more deeply into some of the challenges that we, we deal with on a more tangible and practical day-to-day -day level. So whether that be email or phones or interruptions or procrastination or meetings that go on and on and on. We'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty on those items as well. Um, so come back Friday, looking forward to being with you. Um, and, and hopefully the things that we've surfaced today, again, these principles, the things that we really do know, we just need to learn to walk in them. Hopefully they'll begin to build some traction even before we meet next Friday. So uh, Susie, I'm gonna kick it back over to you and uh, I will see you all. Uh, next or this coming Friday, rather. Thank you so much, Aaron, and thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We were a small group, but I feel like we were mighty. And uh, we hope to see you on Friday, same bat time, same bat channel, for part two of time management. And everybody, enjoy your evening. Good night.